Assalamualaikum uh, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. The weather has at least agreed with today and hopefully we'll continue to do so. Uh, I've been asked to speak about consent, particularly relating to sexual violence, sexual relationships, etc. But I think it's very interesting because it's very hard to talk about consent when we don't admit to having sex in Pakistan. You know, we don't admit to having any kind of sexual relations, we don't admit to having uh, sex within marriage, even or without marriage. When everyone is asked, how do children come? It's kind of like left vague, you pray to Allah Mia, suddenly a child appeared. You know, did you have a relationship, anything happened? Nothing happened. So when we are not willing to talk and admit that any kind of sexual relationships happen, it becomes incredibly difficult to then even navigate and understand questions related to consent. The shame associated with any kind of sexual behavior, whether it's simple as cuddling or kissing, within marriage or without marriage, are such taboo subjects that how do we even define the rules around it? Pakistani Mashti mein jab hum baat karte hain khas taur par, hum bachpan se hume sikhaya jata hai ke hamari body ki koi boundaries nahi hoti. Whether we have, I mean, an example with our kids, with ourselves, we meet somebody, give them a hug and kiss. We're always told, give everyone a hug and kiss. Agar koi auntie aati hai, koi uncle aata hai, koi bhi bada aata hai, you know, sar par haath, theek hai, laga lete hai. If they want to hug us and kiss us, we're never allowed to say no. We are never allowed to reject that. We are always told, listen to the elders. Whatever they tell you to do, you have to listen. Be silent. Be quiet. Respect your elders. But when that respect turns into not being able to identify your boundaries, to say that I don't want to be touched, I don't want to be kissed, I don't want to hug this person, we're not allowed to use that voice even in our childhood. We're not allowed to draw those boundaries. And as we grow older and older, those boundaries are become even more difficult and even vaguer to define. Then how we expected to learn them later on. Then comes into, let's say, about more teenage years, romance, you know, crushes, etc., etc. And all of our cues we learn are from a lot of the Indian movies, the Pakistani movies, Hollywood movies. And the concepts keep coming up. Even the Korean dramas, Ajkal, all of them talk about what the concept of romance is. It comes across chase and chase and not take any kind of rejection. I was watching this thing, one of the YouTube TikTok, I can't even remember anymore, was about how a boy tried to give a girl a valentine in front of the entire school and she said no, because she didn't want a card from him, she didn't want to go somewhere with him. And the next day, the entire school gave him cards, gave him chocolates, they all tried to be his valentines to make him feel better. Why? He asked, she said no. So you are indirectly shaming her for saying no, and you're teaching him that you should never have said no, or she should not have said no to you. These silent messages, these messages subconsciously start affecting us. And when we don't have conversation around them with our children, with our marriages, or within our marriages, it becomes very difficult to identify boundaries of what can you say yes to, and what can you say no to. We have issues, for example, there's a very famous YouTube video, if you guys must watch it, called Tea and Consent. It's translated into various languages, you should watch that because it gives such an interesting simplicity to the concept. The concept is, do you say, ask somebody for any kind of sexual contact, or in this case they use the example of tea, if they say no, end of story, you do not give them tea. If you go, if they said tea, yes to tea today, and they say no to tea tomorrow, that doesn't mean you have to give them tea, even though they said yesterday, and so on and so forth. But that is not discussed in Pakistan. So when we come to relationships, when you enter into a relationship, there's give this social kind of conduct where there's supposed to be a tacit acceptance of any kind of sexual contact or relationship, or you know, it's supposed to escalate further and further and further. And we're expected for women to stay silent, to be demure. The roles that women are given 
or any, you know, whether it's transgender, whether it's, you know, even male, anyone who is like the rece on the receiving side is supposed to stay demure while the hetero male or, you know, the, the more powerful male is supposed to be the one on the aggressive or assertive side. Society tells us these are the roles. Now, women are always supposed to say no, or the receiving side should always say no, but they don't really mean it. So we have things in our culture, hasi to hasi. Make a grand gesture, do another grand gesture, do another grand gesture. Ultimately, she'll say yes. We have movies such as The Notebook, where it's supposed to be the ultimate romance, but he basically coerced her into saying yes because she, he threatened to kill himself if she doesn't say yes. We look at Holly, Bollywood movies, which is the same thing, threatening to kill themselves or harm themselves until somebody says yes, and that's seen as a great romantic gesture as well. But when in our relationships, we come down to it, when from childhood we are not allowed to say yes or no to somebody touching our shoulder, touching our back, touching our head, giving us a kiss, how then do we learn to say no in an intimate relationship? How do we say, learn to say no in a relationship where there's power dynamics? How do we learn to say no when our bosses, who might be much more senior to us, or people who we respect who are older to us, touch us just a little bit longer, whose hand comes down a little bit lower? We're not allowed to say no because we've never been taught how to say no and how to say, this is not okay with me. I do not want you to be touching my hand. I do not want you to shake, I don't shake hands. And when somebody, and I remember in school, um, there was this one girl who would refuse to shake hands with everyone because she would say, I don't like shaking hands. And she was branded as the one who was the anomaly. People laughed at her. Why? Because she demanded her own body autonomy because she was not comfortable with it. So when we are not taught to say no to anything, how are we expected to learn that throughout all of our life? So the basic concept of consent. Because consent, hota kya? Let, let's talk about it. Consent is when somebody says yes to something, happening to them knowing what they are consenting to. Kyunko pata hai ke what exactly is being asked of us and what exactly are we saying yes to. Consent is saying it at that exact moment in time, not 10 minutes before, not two minutes later, it's about right now in this moment. And lastly, it is voluntary, which means that there is no pressure, there is no threat. There's nothing of that any sort that they are able to say yes and they are safe to say no. That is true consent. But that concept is not discussed even when we come to the law. For the first time in 2021, was consent defined in the law? in the criminal law, anti-rape, uh, the anti-rape investigation and trial act 2021 was the first law in Pakistan since 1947 to define consent. Internationally, consent has been defined in the law. It's the biggest question when it comes to any kind of sexual violence. But the question is not that did the girl consent or did the victim consent? The question is, did the accused make sure she was consenting? Because in Pakistan, we put all of the questions on the victim. The motorway rape case, why was she there? The F9 park rape, why was she there? Not about was why did they do this? The question was never about the accused, why did they behave in this way? Did this check if she was consenting? Question is, if she was in a relationship, why was, shouldn't, why, why, how did, she must have consented. How did he know that she didn't consent? And how is he supposed to know? How do we? So we don't look for whether there was consent. We look for how was there lack of consent and our stereotypical idea which falls into what we call rape myths. A woman or a victim, male, female, transgender, child, anyone is expected to struggle violently. If you didn't struggle violently or scream or shout or raise you and cry, people consider that as consented, maybe maybe a little bit, consent. If she really or he really didn't want it, they would have said something. They're expected to immediately report it. They should have struggled so that their body is physically hurt. There's marks of violence everywhere. There's an expectation 
that if you truly do not consent, that is how you're supposed to react. There's no concepts of PTSD, there's no concepts of silence out of fear, there's no other concepts of being immobilized by fear. Nobody discusses that. Because instead of talking about what true consent looks like, we just try to come up with this picture of stereotypical, what lack of consent should look like in the minds of narrow-minded concept of what is and is not consent. So I think it's very important now, and I, I'm, I'm cognizant of time because I just have three more minutes, I just want to talk about where, what we should be doing now. We need to stop pretending that sex or kind of sexual kind of behavior, sexual harassment does not happen in Pakistan. We need to start discussing it with our youth. We need to start giving our children autonomy and decision-making power whether what they are comfortable with. We should start with our children to say, do you want to say hello, hi, salam? Do you want to touch a person? Do you want them to touch you? Do se karo, handshake karo, whatever you want to. We need to start giving them the permission to decide what or who is able to contact them and their body. We should talk about the fact that people have relationships because they may or may not, your children, by keeping your eyes blind to the fact that they may or may not have relationships, means you are sending them into a world without the proper knowledge. And we should talk about sex because it is happening around us even if it is not happening to us. And then we move on to marriage. What are the rights in marriage? Now, whether you want to go into traditional Islamic sense, you want to go into traditional Christianity, Judaism, any religion, look further than what the texts and what people are telling us. Islam, for example, talks about equality in marriage. It talks about equal rights within marriage. Read into it further than just what upar upar aapko log batate hain. Because you do have rights. So, and particularly with consent, and if you withdraw consent, it is accepted whether in religion, whether in human rights, whether in our lives. We need to stop tolerating the silent sexual harassment that happens, the silent sexual abuse that happens. We need to start perpetuating boundaries and allowing ourselves to boundaries. <laughs> and we need to start allowing us to learn how to say no and define our boundaries. And that is the only way we can really start trying to identify how do we vocalize consent, consent and how do we vocalize lack of consent. Thank you.